Hello and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to worship with you today. Our call to worship. We come this day, precious God, as people in need of your steadfast love. With you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. We gather this day, water-changing God, as people looking for signs. With you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. We worship this day, gifting God, as people who confess Jesus as our Lord. With you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. We begin with our opening prayer. Your love, O God, is as immeasurable as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches higher than the clouds in the sky. Your justice is like the majestic mountains, firm and unshakable, and your judgments are as deep as the ocean depths. And yet, in your greatness, you care for all of creation, people and animals alike. How precious is your unfailing love, O God! All humanity finds rest in your presence. We eat and are satisfied at your table. We drink from the river of your overflowing kindness. For you alone can quench our thirst. You alone can open our eyes and awaken our souls. May your love continue to grow deeply in the lives of all who know you. May your salvation come to all who follow in your paths. Amen. Do you live in God's abundance? In times of uncertainty, we tend to lean towards a scarcity mindset. A really good example of this is the toilet paper crisis of the COVID pandemic. Turbulent times make our problems seem bigger than they really are. Whether unexpected bills, financial woes, uncertainty in a job, or a pandemic, we often allow hard times to bring us down into a place of negativity, fear, and pain. This is a scarcity mindset that is keeping us away from living in God's abundance. To be clear, living in God's abundance doesn't mean an abundance of material things. Those things can be taken away at a moment's notice. Our material wealth can be here today, gone tomorrow. Living in abundance means seeking after God and His goodness. It means using our wealth, any that we might have, to give back to others and help our community. Our treasure is not here in the world, but it is in heaven. Let's talk a bit more about what a scarcity mindset is. According to Jared Bunch, a scarcity mindset says that you have to jealously protect what you have in that moment because it is yours and the world may take it away. This means that we are looking to the world to fulfill our comforts and our needs. You feel like you have to protect your possessions or self-worth because someone else has the power to take it away from you. It is a fear-motivated motivated way of thinking that simply isn't sustainable. Living in God's abundance does not mean that financial blessing and physical well-being are always the will of God and that faith positive speech and donations to religious causes will increase our material wealth. I'm talking about God's good design that is intended for us to live an abundant life. If your desires align with God's will, He will look upon your request with favor and allow it to come to pass. We can't do anything to earn God's abundance. Faith is not an if I manifest it, it will happen kind of thing. God freely gives it to those who believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. And God has so much in store for our lives. He gives us above and beyond what we could ever think. He fulfills the deepest parts of our longing hearts. He tells us His plans are always for our good and His glory. God gives us more than we could ever ask for. He sent His Son to die on the cross so that everything would be made right again. Jesus gives us abundant life. In fact, He gives us more than our salvation. He doesn't just love us. He gives an ongoing, intimate relationship with the Father. He also gives us eternal hope and a hope that we can live in light of today. We can live an abundant life right now. 
Christ died on the cross and rose again so that we might join him in living an abundant life. Only our security and comfort can be found in him. Living a life of abundance means that we go around being grateful and joyful for the things that God has given us. We don't covet or envy others for what we don't have or wish God had given us. We live a life of abundance because God is good and faithful. He has done a glorious work through Jesus Christ. He is doing the same glorious work in and through you so that others might know him. John 10.10 10, a thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you might abound in hope. Philippians 4, 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory of Christ Jesus and Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So how do we live in God's abundance? To build an abundant mindset, you need to change the way you view God. From the beginning, God designed creation to live in abundance. He created the world and declared it good. The same God who created the heavens and the earth shows the same generosity towards us. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, we see that God desires abundant life for us filled with generosity, grace, and love. Jesus came to give us life. Not only that, but he also came to give us an abundant and satisfying life. He is the living water that always satisfies. He quenches our thirst and fills us up with his love, mercy, and grace. If we operate from a place of abundance, you are saying you truly believe in God's goodness and providence. Abundance means believing that God is working for your good. No matter what is taken away from you in the material world, your faith will not waver. Faith means that you really believe that God is good. Faith means that you really believe that God will be good to you. Faith means that you really trust God to be God. Living in abundance happens when you live loved. That means you understand that Jesus' love is abundant. All the things that are a part of the scarcity mindset might be taken away but you know that Jesus' love is unwavering. His love is steadfast, so we don't have to be scared that it will be taken away. Live from the abundant place that you are loved and you won't find yourself begging others for scraps of love. That's a quote from Lisa Turkhurst. God's grace is abundant. Jesus came into the world so that believers could have real, eternal life more and better life than we could ever have dreamed of. He died on the cross so we could inherit his life-giving gift of redemption. We have access to God's unending grace because of Jesus' sacrifice. In 1 Timothy 1, we see that Paul was not deserving of God's grace, but he received it anyway. God saw Paul fit enough to lavish upon him the all-abundant, all-sufficient, rich, and undeserving grace. God's grace is never lacking in purpose. Because of God's grace, you can be used as an example to those who would believe in Him for eternal life. God stores up goodness for those who love Him. God has abundant goodness at all times. He has enough to share with everyone. God takes care of His people. He gives us life in the empty, broken places. He restores and rebuilds. He is a good God that can do more than we could ever imagine. In the wilderness, God told the Israelites to gather daily only the manna that they needed. Anything more than the day's rations would go to spoil. And he promised to provide for them daily. God's goodness is abundant. He knows exactly what we need and will provide for us. He gives us more than we could ever want or need. 
God might not give us all we need all at once. If we had everything we needed, we wouldn't need a God. So God stores up some of his blessings for when we are in times of trial and suffering. He wants to bless us because he loves us. He makes sure we have what we need when we need it and when we ask for it. God who calls us to mission also calls us to feasting and dancing. Let us remember that there are holy days described in the Jewish texts in which there is to be no fasting but eating, drinking, and sharing of miracles. May the Savior Jesus, who turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana, turn our tedium into festival and show us how to alternate between commitment and carnival. May God's will be done here where we live. May impossible things come to pass. May we find strength in the journey and joy in the struggle through the grace of God. And now, let us, God's people, pray. O God most loving, give us ears to hear, hearts to feel, and souls to know and deeply experience your spirit-charged words. Activate our own spiritual gifts that we may change the substance of our lives from self-serving to full service and to be true of heart and strong in faith now more than ever. O righteous, faithful Lord, in you our souls are free at last. O God most loving, let us not keep silent as we raise our voices loudly and often for those who are lost and forsaken and in danger and despair in this life. Let us not rest as we continually urge all governments and authorities, locally and globally, to bring freedom into truth and action with peace, justice, and mercy for all. O righteous, faithful Lord, in you our souls are free at last. O God most loving, calm the hearts and minds of those with physical, emotional, or spiritual challenges, and lighten the load for all who give them care. O righteous, faithful Lord, in you our souls are free at last. O God most loving, console all who mourn as your steadfast and priceless love gathers our faithful departed into the joy and abundance of your house forever. O righteous, faithful Lord, in you our souls are free at last. Holy God, our well of life, as the vessels were filled at Cana, fill us with your light that we may see light and with your loving kindness and favor, grant us courage to follow the path of our Redeemer Christ with refuge under the shadow of your wings. We ask through Jesus, your Son, our salvation, and the Holy Spirit, your infinite wisdom, who together with you reign as one God forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace.